What's up everybody, it's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of thecreditrepairshop.com and in today's video, we're gonna talk about a new client um, that we just brought in and I wanted to kind of show you what's going on with this information. I'm not gonna reveal the, the client's information, their personal information, but I wanna talk about the, 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 the hill that they gotta climb to be able to get their, get their credit repaired. And, and another reason why I want to show this one is because this is gonna be a good example of, of uh, demonstrating to you how you have to make your goals and what is needed for your credit to kind of match. Because a lot of people will come to us and they'll say, well, I wanna get my credit repaired so I can buy a house, but they're not willing to do what's required with the, to repair their credit to get the house. They just throw out there, hey, I just want to have my credit repaired. Well, you have to, to get a house, you have to have your credit repaired a certain way, strictly because of underwriters. Uh, maybe you want to get your score raised. Well, there are certain things that have to, it has to be repaired, but there's also certain things that you have to do to make your score rise. Like you can't just clean your credit up and then expect your score to just jump up into the 790s and 800s. It doesn't work that way. So what this will be a very good example, number one, because of the, the, the situation that they're in. This is a couple. You will see, uh, well, let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. So customer came, number one, very frustrated. Number two, uh, afraid that income is gonna start being taken away from them with potential lawsuits, the threats are coming, all types of stuff. And as I demonstrate, uh, go through things here, you'll see why the lawsuits are coming. So let me just get my red marker here. So customer evaluation, we got, they were blown up with uh, collection agencies where the majority of them have been purchased by debt, debt collectors, third-party debt collectors. So we have Portfolio Recovery Associates, you've heard of them before, $6,842 per month past synchrony bank account portfolio bought another uh account five thousand five hundred thirty two dollars from synchrony midland credit management nine nineteen hundred thirty dollars a former city bank account midland credit management eleven thousand uh four hundred twenty one dollars city bank account these are all credit cards also uh calvary portfolio Recovery fifteen thousand seven hundred thirty-two commodity bank, and then they had TD Bank and Kohl's card twenty-three hundred twenty-four fifty-nine, still with the original creditor. So, the first thing that we do, first thing is after we do the goal, like we we do all of this stuff here, and then we go to what I'm going to talk about after this. But I want to break down some things right here, just in case you have debt collectors coming after you with these third parties because the first thing they're going to do is they're going to buy the debt they buy them in big batch portfolios and then they're going to send out a letter this is a called a 30-day dunning letter and if you do not respond to that letter you are giving them permission to put all of this information on your credit reports which for this client all of this information was on their credit reports from the uh, debt collection company. So in a way, it looks like they have a problem with the debt collector and they have a problem with the bad synchrony bank account. So the, the, the synchrony banks and the city bank and the commodity bank. So it's like they have two negative accounts on their credit reports due to the debt collection company purchasing the debt, sending out the 30 day letter and they didn't respond to that 30 day letter. So you can avoid having the information placed on your credit report if you send, if you respond to that 30 day letter. When you respond to the 30 day letter, they have five days to respond back. If they don't respond back within that five day period, that whole debt is void regardless if they purchased it. So you might be saying, well, what do I need to say in that response letter number one to this one, and then uh, if they respond back within five days, what do I need to say? I will get to that later in the video. So we see what they have here. These are the debts. This is the mountain that they gotta climb. 
we see this, maybe your situation is worse, maybe your situation is not as bad as theirs. So now let's move on here. So one of the things that I make sure that we ask, and you've probably had this question asked if you worked with a credit repair company, is that what are your customer goals? The re Other people say it, ask you that question because they want to know the goal. I ask that question. I have my reps ask that question because when you understand what this is, answer is you need to point the customer in the direction of that of how to get to that goal because it may not be the same path that they have in their mind most people will think that credit repair is erasing and rebuilding but you have to be careful if you have if you're trying to do something like buy a home just fixing your credit is not going to do it you have to do it a certain way so now uh, I, we'll, I, I like to ask these three questions. Are you looking to do something which is like a major p purchase? Are you uh, steady where you're no major purchases at the time? You're just kind of sitting on the sideline or urgent. I need to do something because I have threats of lawsuits. So let's talk about this one right here. Do something. Major purchase, not much time. For the example, let's talk about buying a house. If your credit is destroyed and you're looking to buy a house and you have this situation that I just showed you right here, I would lead you more towards doing settlements on those accounts if you are trying to buy the house. But l listen to me though, before doing the settlements, we would do a full debt validation. Now remember, they missed their 30 day but we would still be able to do a full validation and during in that validation process, some of those debts may just go away because they're not, they're going to fail the test in the validation process. Now you might be saying, what's the validation process? I'm going to give you a, a document later that you could use to uh, start that process. So no matter which path they're on, we would do a, a do the validation process, but it has to be different provided by what the urgency, if it's urgent over here, or if it's they need to do something to buy a house over here, it just needs to be done a different way. So if you're looking to buy a house, so we would do the debt validation with each of those uh, debt collectors, I would move to do settlements with the original creditors right away. I would tell them, if you're trying to get into that house, because that house, you're going to be able to build wealth. That house is going to save you from having a landlord over your over your, uh, over your your shoulder. Uh, that house is going to have you be able to save money uh, on, instead of uh, paying and making a landlord family rich. So it would be worth offering like 25 cents on the dollar in, in negotiating with those original creditors. Now, with the debt collectors... You do the full validate, do the full validation slash verification with the debt collectors. If they cannot prove, now what I'm saying cannot prove that we know that they bought the debt and it was a legitimate debt, but do they have all of the documentation to prove legally that they would be able to win if they take you over here to court? Do they have that? So. But before, if let's just say, for example, if they were not trying to sue the person and they had just got letters from debt collectors, they forgot to respond to them, they came to us and they're like, we need to get this house, we're tired of this landlord, we need to do this, but we have this stuff in our way, what can we do? We would start that process of the validation and verification validation and see which debt collectors are going to be able to prove and which ones are not able to prove that they prove their, that they're going to be able to come after the debt. So it would be in this process, we would do it here. We would also do it in this process, but now let me tell you why is it different in this process? And someone made this mistake uh, the other day where they were like, uh, they put in a YouTube comment and they were like, Steve, I did a validation and it, because on, on the video that I just did, I said that if you do a validation 
uh, dispute the debt, which is you're doing a validation with the uh, debt collection company, that there's a 90-day cool-off period. And they were like, they didn't do the 90-day cool-off period, that they actually took uh, p took the person to court. And I said, the reason why the, you, you they don't do it is because you missed that pro that period of time. And when they take you to court, you don't dis you don't dispute directly with them. You just do your dispute within your court summons response. That's where you would do your your uh, b uh, validation, your debt validation, and you would put all of that information in there in your response. So what I see a lot of people doing, and that's why I said you got to match up where you're at with your specific situation. So if you're not looking, if you're looking to do something major. You need to look at, if you have original creditors, let's move to do settlements with those. If you have debt collectors, let's do the validation. Let's see what comes back provable. Some of it may be erased, some of it may not. Then we move to settlement because it's more important to get you in that house. If you got more time, then there can be that back and forth because when you do this before they try to do a lawsuit, it will be a 90-day cool-off peri uh, cool period of that dispute process where they can't do anything. And then you will be able to either get them to, to cease collections because you're challenging them on every step as they send documents back, you send responses back. It's like a back and forth. And a lot of debt collectors will cease collection because they know if you start fighting them right here and then you move it over here, all you have to do is use that same information against them in that response. So they don't usually move forward right there. I'll, I will see a lot of debt collectors, if, you, if you're if you hitting them here early, they will not move over there because they know that they don't have the information to be able to prove it in court. It's only when people just allow that to go forward. So if you have more time, you'll have that back and forth period of time. Now, if you're over here in a lawsuit and they're coming after you, and, you know, you're not trying to buy a house, but they're coming after you because it's urgent because they're threatening lawsuits, they're threatening to garnish your wages and all that stuff. Then your credit repair process is different because this fight needs to go on first while your credit repair process is going on. We'll, we will see a lot of credit repair companies when people start to get sued. They will start calling us and they're like, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Well, what do you do is you got to help your client uh, with a response if they don't know how to do it. They, they, they have to, uh, uh, the client has to represent themselves, but you can guide them on giving them information on what they can do. And it's basically doing a debt validation and putting together an affirmative defense. And I have other videos on this, but it's basically putting together an affirmative defense based off of the documents that they provide. So you can see here, there's, a, there's three different situations. And when we ask the customer goals, uh, are you looking to do something right away? Or are you steady? When I say steady, that means that they're not trying to do nothing. They're just like, hey, let's just start this process and start working on this. And let's just see that, you know, let's just make stuff happen. And then if it's urgent, then we start moving on people who have, uh, issues with lawsuits. And right now, this is like, um, like you see a lot of lawsuits popping up right now. Like, okay. So if we look at the situation here, I'm, I got it back on the screen here. You know, you, this is that, that client's situation and we're going to help them work their way through it. This is not going to be something that's just done overnight, but you can see that the process, uh, is going to take some work. Um, this is a service that we provide uh, this group here. Each one of these uh, collection agencies are threatening lawsuits. So the first thing that I told them that we need to do is, you know, align what, what they want to do is, do, do you want to go through with the uh, court cases? Do you want to, you know, fight each one of these in court? Uh, they said that they don't want to do that. They just don't want to do that. And I said, well, then if you don't want to do that, then we need to approach each one of these uh, uh, collection agencies and do the, the validation. And then it, whatever ones come back, you will have the choice if you want to continue fighting. And if it gets close to where they do actually take you to court, 
and try to do a lawsuit is that we would move forward quickly on that one to try to do a settlement on it. And they said that, hey, th that's what we would want to do. And the reason why com people come to us to do this is because, it number one, it takes a lot of back and forth work. Number two, they don't want to be on the phone with these companies. These companies will try to make you feel like you're a deadbeat. They will try to get you emotional. They will try to dig in and try to find out if you're hiding money. They will do all types of things to try to get you to, to say things that can kind of hurt you if they decide to take you to court. So what we do is we just stand in as a third party and we just, you know, do the back and forth. And then, the, you know, uh, if any negotiations are needed, we'll do the negotiations. And if it's accepted, we arrange that payment and then, you know, everything's good. Arrange to have that deleted off the credit report. Even if it's not deleted, we'll still be able to get it removed. It's just more about getting the customer moved forward. But before I close it out, I want you to think for a second. If you have this situation, if you have this situation, where would you be thinking? Are you thinking more on the the credit repair, which is the ultimate goal, but are you thinking about the credit repair or are you thinking about what needs to be done to deal with these, these creditors? And a lot of people, what I see them do is they just say, I'm just going to run away from the creditors. Like most people run away. This couple was running away until they catch up and they start to uh, really put a lot of pressure and, uh, you know, a lot of threats to start taking income. And we all know if they start to take the income, it makes it harder for you to uh, be able to uh, make ends meet and to be able to, you know, provide for your family. So if you need help with your credit, please visit us at the creditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different, so you can see my eight-point validation process and my two-phase settlement process. If you need your credit reports and scores, go to the website, your, the number three scores.com. Grab those uh, credit reports, TransUnion, Equifax, Experian credit reports. If you have debt collectors coming after you, and I was talking about this earlier, uh, utilize my three letters, statute of limitations, debt validation, and cease and desist collection activities letter. Those letters will get the job done, especially if you get to them early during that 30-day process, because it's going to ask questions that they didn't even expect you to ask. Please subscribe to the channel, post your questions and comments. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of creditrepairshop.com.